So today, um, as mentioned, we want to talk about a number of different topics. Um, first thing is about uh, the Cisco CCNA version 3, some facts and figures about that, um, what the exam structure uh, is, how it's structured, why, why we're, uh, Cisco have updated their versions from uh, version 2 to version 3, a summary of the changes, uh, the differences between the two, uh, what the migration path for people that are currently using uh, or certified and halfway through their uh, CCNA, some wireless facts, uh, a summary of each course on the, under the new CCNP wireless stream and of course um, some migration uh, information from the old to the new. So it, you may be quite surprised but at the, um, as it stands today there's 10 different CCNA certifications and if um, for those on the call that have been in networking and, and uh, traditional routing and switching for a long time would probably find this surprising because um, you know back in the day it was just uh, Cisco back in the 90s it was just all about routing and switching whereas as you can see um, you know the amount of new certifications coming on stream. CyberOps now focuses on um, penetration testing security uh, becoming a very uh, real uh, and tangible uh, exercise for organisations and it's very important. Uh, I would always, I used to, I always say that um, security is one of the probably most recession proof industries because security never sleeps or hackers never sleep should I say. So, And of course the industrial, um, CCNA industrial which is the internet of things or, or internet of everything is also becoming very popular. Out of all of those certifications, it's no, no surprises that uh, CCNA data center is, is of course the number one paying everyone moving to, uh, to cloud uh, or hybrid cloud as they, as they say, but uh, there's no, uh, no surprises there. Statistically speaking, um, you'll see that uh, the, the lion's share of, of experience for your average CCNA is between one and four years uh, and then it, funnily enough it actually only increases from that from five to nine uh, as the next most popular segment uh, and obviously there's a high rate of satisfaction there. So the average experience as you can see is between one and four years um, and again not surprisingly most are, are, uh, are male being a male dominated industry. Uh, no surprises there, although uh, I, I do like how they've uh, managed to leave the head on the mail half empty. Not sure what that what that means about us, but never mind. So the CCNA certification paths, you can actually achieve your certification one of two ways, uh, or for your exam certification one of two paths. The first path is by taking the exam separately, which is the uh, the standard 100-105 exam and then the 200-105, or uh, alternatively, you can take them uh, as a combination exam, which is the, just singly is the 200-125. Now, we normally suggest that if you have less than two to three years hands-on experience, um, we recommend taking the exam separately. Uh, and really what that means is it's better off taking smaller steps um, if you don't have a, a huge wealth of uh, knowledge and experience rather than gambling it all on the one certification. Uh, or as I mentioned you can take it singly uh, and I will note that the cost of taking the exam separately or as a combination don't change. So there's no cost advantage to bundling all, it all into the one uh, sitting. So why the version update? Well what we're finding is that um, and if you've looked at Cisco over the last few years they, they're effectively moving away from a hardware based organisation and becoming uh, you know a software-led uh, product company. So what we're also finding is the, um, the, the difference in the, the product portfolio is becoming more siloed um, and more importantly it's diversifying and becoming a lot wider. And, and what we're also finding is that the CCNA certification historically used to be what you would call a gateway certification. So you would come in and do your, your ICNE 1, ICNE 2 and you learn the foundations of the network and then from that point you would then choose which uh, I guess flavour uh, that you, want, you wanted to, uh, to, to, uh, to move down to. And, and of course to quote Mark Anderson, software is eating the world. So Cisco's newest students we're finding as well are coming from the developer space strange enough as they move away from traditional physical infrastructure to uh, software defined network. Uh, and of course now you only actually need to complete your ICD1 and then move on to either wireless, voice, security, routing and switching or whatnot as we mentioned in the earlier slide. So essentially Cisco want you to choose your flavour or choose your path early in the certification path than they had previously. They realised that um, 
although many of their products uh, sit on a network layer foundation, there's more to the products becoming a lot wider and a lot deeper. So they need you to, uh, to train up on those earlier. Summary of the changes. Um, so you'll notice that wireless is now completely gone um, and uh, we will touch on wireless obviously later in the presentation. With IPv6, no surprises there, we've run out of um, IPv4 uh, IP addresses, so uh, that's the flavour. They don't talk about um, subnetting like they used to and there's really um, a greater focus on routing and switching. So what they've done is they've realised that rather than sort of making it more generic, um, they've now made it more specific um, as you're heading, as you're starting your journey. And of course they talk about high availability and um, the flavour, uh, I guess the talk of the town at the moment is APIs or software defined networking. So as I mentioned, unfortunately we don't have um, a lot of time to talk about SDN, but I'd like to cover that maybe in, in, a, in its own um, topic down the track. So for those not familiar, API form the foundation of the SDN. Um, now Cisco's newest products are now software based offerings in, uh, which offer greater flexibility for growth, security and failover. Um, and it's a very exciting space. So what happens if you're halfway through your CCNA certification? Um, the, the cutoffs for the exams for, for us in one is the 20th of August and, and number two is uh, the 24th. What happens if you're halfway through, let's say you've done your ICND1 uh, course and you need to sit your exam, well you can go and sit your version one, you best to go and sit your version one exam before August the 20th uh, and my suggestion is that you book now. Um, even if you're not prepared, book the date in and lock it in. Uh, otherwise uh, you'll do what everyone else does and leave it to the last minute and you may miss out on exam seats. They tend to fill very quickly around uh, end of when exams go end of life. Uh, and the, I guess the other good news is that the majority of the version 3 changes for, for CCNA actually occurred in ICND2. So even if you've uh, even if you've, um, uh, you're halfway through your certification, it's not going to have a huge impact on you. So you can still uh, come through that uh, without major problems. But as I mentioned, if you do want to sit that ICND version one exam and you really need to um, sit that exam, then make sure you book it uh, in the next couple of weeks rather than waiting until in the end of August. Excuse me while I cough. Okay, back. So um, next part of the, my presentation, I want to talk about Cisco Wireless, a little bit more about as to uh, why it's becoming more popular and and uh, and, and what, how Cisco is structuring that. Now we're not going into um, too much detail, but more of a high level overview. So really, what um, what we're finding with wireless now is uh, browsing, for instance, for that we're wanting more um, with less device. So as you can see from that chart. Uh, mobile browsing overtook desktop browsing early in 2014. Now, um, what that means is obviously <clears throat> with smartphones and tablets now becoming more prolific than desktop devices. Uh, and what we're finding as well is that websites that are not dynamic, meaning those that aren't mobile friendly, um, are not no longer visited. And if you've ever gone to a website recently on your on your smartphone that's not mobile friendly, you can tell pretty quickly um, how frustrating it is and why people don't visit. Uh, the latest figures now, uh, as you can see, it's increasing, uh, is about 70%, 70-30 split. So 70% of traffic now is via a mobile device. So like DDLS, um, here's some facts and figures. Wireless actually celebrated its 25th anniversary this year. Um, uh, the average age, um, funnily enough, of uh, children received their first mobile phone um, is now 12.1 years. And 38% of children under two uh, have actually used a mobile device for media. And for those that um, have young children, you'll appreciate, um, uh, I guess, how interesting a, your, your mobile phone is when you your children see you spending so much time on it. Mobile text media is, is growing uh, and mobile voice communication um, is actually in decline. So, uh, you know, if you've ever had to talk to a millennial, you realise that most of them actually prefer to talk digitally rather than uh, have a, a voice conversation. Now, over 20 billion devices are going to be connected uh, to the internet by 2020 and many of those are going to be focusing around the internet of things or the internet of everything. Um, so many of those, if you can imagine those 20 billion devices, um, are going to be connected via a wireless medium of some sort. 
So it's only going to be more, um, it's only going to become more prolific that um, wireless is going to become uh, more practical and, and more applicable in the, uh, in the workforce. The new courses, um, very complex names to remember, as you can see, Wi-Fund, Wi-Design. Um, I'll just quickly run you through the, the, the various courses. Now, the Wi-Fund course is, a, is your CCNA wireless. You would do that by doing your ICND1 and then doing your Wi-Fund. You don't need to do your ICND2 uh, to achieve that. Uh, effectively, it's, it's, it's an RF or radio frequency uh, course based on 802.11 technologies. Uh, and essential, it covers the essentials along with installing, uh, configuring, monitoring, and, and basic troubleshooting tasks needed to support small to medium uh, and of course enterprise wireless networks. Your Y design uh, is about identifying customers and uh, customer and application requirements, applying predictive wireless design principles, uh, and conducting site surveys needed to design and optimize your uh, enterprise wireless network. The Y deploy uh, is, is about implementing wireless um, networks based on the applicable Cisco controller and unified switching uh, architectures effectively that supports high availability, uh, quas, multicast, uh, multicast and uh, mobility services. Uh, the Y T-shoot, again, pretty self-explanatory. It's troubleshooting and optimizing enterprise wireless infrastructure uh, and related services, plus the tools and methodologies needed to, uh, to identify and resolve client connectivity performance and RF issues. And the Y secure, um, is, is about building knowledge of implementing client device security, uh, identity-based authentication uh, and services such as ICE, uh, along with securing and monitoring enterprise wireless infrastructure. So what if you're, again, halfway through your CCNP wireless and you're not sure about your exams? As you can see, Cisco have um, very kindly uh, said that if you're halfway through one uh, course or you've completed one or two or three or whatever if your courses and you get a credit towards uh, the direct corresponding uh, course. Sometimes this can be a bit fragmented and there's not a, there's not a I guess it, what you would call an apple for apple or a like for like but thankfully in this instance uh, even though they've changed the names you still get credits for the older course. But please remember that if you're if you sat one of the courses or you need to sit an exam under the old um, CCNP wireless stream, whether it be CUWSS or your RUWBN, please note you need to do so before September the 21st because that's when the, uh, the exam goes end of life. So the last thing I'd like to mention is um, a limited offer we're running uh, as part of this promotion and those that are actually joining the call, we will be uh, sending you a confirmation of this uh, post the call. But we are offering a training, the CCNA training bundle for those that haven't undertaken the training yet. Uh, and what that includes is your ICND1 and ICND2, which is five days each, so it's 10 days total in training. Uh, we also include the exams uh, for whether they're combined, your CCNA single exam or your ICND1 and 2, uh, a subscription to the Cisco Practice Labs, and of course, practice exams to make sure that you're, uh, you're up to speed and ready to sit your exams. Um, and that's for, uh, we're running that for as a special, which is actually works out to be about 40% off uh, the RRP. So it's a very, uh, 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 it's lots of value. Uh, and we'll be offering that to everyone on the call today. And that's it for me. So um, what I will do is, uh, as Rebecca may have mentioned, is uh, I do actually have, uh, we are, will be available after Matthew's presentation for question and answer. But if you do have any questions before that, please post them in the chat window and uh, I'll try and address them as Matthew, throughout Matthew's presentation. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that, Michael. Um, what I might do now is hand it over to Matt. Now, in fact, do you need me to pass the ball? Oh, That's fine. I can pass the ball. Okay, Matt, the floor is yours. I'll just uh, go to full screen. Hopefully everybody can see Microsoft competencies and you out there. We can. Fantastic, thank you. And again, I'd just like to really uh, just make a note that we really appreciate your patience with us in the um, technical difficulties at the beginning of the, the call. It seems like it always uh, tends to happen on, on, the, on the live run as opposed to how many times you test it beforehand. But we're here now and hopefully you're um, 
found that presentation as um, interesting as I did. Um, so thank you for that, Michael. Funny enough, a lot of the concepts were actually mirrored between Microsoft and Cisco and the direction where Microsoft's going and the vendors are like the Cisco uh, in far as the capabilities and what their expectations of, you know, you as a certified um, you know, professional. So when I was asked to put this course together, uh, it was with a little bit of trepidation and um, our other panellists, Gary Duffel, did mention earlier that at the moment is a fairly interesting time for a lot of our vendors as they're moving towards a more disruptive environment with new focuses on what they require as far as capabilities and competencies and uh, the certifications that support those and as at the validation of those skills and competencies. Microsoft itself um, has had a great big change of shift over uh, the last 12 months specifically and that's been shown in its uh, capabilities and competencies for their partner network and we're starting to see some of those uh, certifications trickle through. Um, I will be talking uh, later in the presentation about the two that are, have just only just come off the press this week um, in SQL and Server. And, but what I want to do is actually talk around where Microsoft's coming from, what they expect from their partners, and in many ways my focus is about what that means to you as, say, a professional within the environment today. So moving right along. Okay, so as I was men just mentioned, the NPN network or the Microsoft Partner Network has, is always evolving and it's evolving to the demands of technology today and what they see their customers requiring. And so they work very strongly with their partner network to ensure that they've got competencies and skill sets that allow them to get the most out of their business to be very competitive in this environment where it's highly gone cloud, very disruptive, very agile. So what I was hoping to do today is actually talk in terms of you as a partner. Now, I can imagine not everybody on the call is actually a partner. They might work for a partner, but in many ways uh, also delivering and teaching service management and service del delivery frameworks, I feel that everybody's a customer. And in many cases, as a professional, your organization is your customer. So the same expectations that Microsoft have on their partners who do the same and promote their business, you almost, that partner for your organization, bring value and expertise back to the digital business. So you can see from this slide, basically there is a, a strong demand for cloud-based and mobility-based solutions, which we'll investigate. So this is straight off the competency framework that works with the partner network. You can see that there is a strong emphasis down the bottom there around the app builder and you know the independent software vendors. We're going to talk about each one of those in just a little bit of detail and then bring them all back together around the technologies that are utilized in being successful in these areas and then map them back to the certifications as they are today and as they move forward. Okay. So as mentioned before, um, it, Michael talked a lot about SDN, you know, software defined networking. You'll see this capability and ICs and APIs growing in a way how our platforms and our environments are managed today. Um, Michael's quite right, where a lot of the vendors are moving away from a hardware based um, business to a management-based business and a delivery-based. And that could be seen in terms of how we manage those devices, manage those platforms and have applications on top. So a lot of it, everything is actually based upon a lot of program, a lot of software definition and delivery. And this is reflected in the cloud performance. You'll see productivity done both in, say, um, small mid-market through Office 365. You've got your Microsoft as your cloud platforms. And there's a lot of certifications that are really focusing on cloud delivery and what that means to partnerships between you internally um, delivering a data, you know, virtual data center and also uh, sourcing that out or extending that out into the public or public um, cloud environments and with your cloud partners, whether it be AWS, it could be Microsoft, Azure, so on and so forth. Obviously, then we talk about what do we do with those platforms and how do they deliver value. 
So Microsoft's also uh, re-energizing the Dynamics platform, really trying to make sure that the customer relationship management and enterprise relationship management or enterprise resource planning uh, applications are solid. And of course, today with uh, a big focus on mobility, and again, Michael announced it earlier around the digital world, um, connectivity anywhere, looking at um, agnostic applications, working on many different types of operating systems and platforms is very important. And from all this, you can grow, you say, your cloud business. But as I'd like to reiterate, your cloud business is the way you deliver those services to your organization as a professional internally, as an internal service provider or you know, support. OK, so as we just move along, I'll try and go through these fairly quickly. Because again, my focus to, at the beginning of this uh, seminar is really just to kind of put yourself in the mindset of where Microsoft's going. That allowing you to kind of have an idea about where you can focus your energies in the certifications you'll be looking towards in the new future. So one that I see a lot at the moment is around uh, solution think and design think and continuous delivery. And basically that allows us in this digital business to see how we can create good digital solutions to uh, streamline the connection points between our customer base and us as a business. And that, as I said, the customer base could be internal users or they could be external uh, markets. So there's a real strong emphasis on the application development, whether it be APIs, and creating those uh, good, solid, scalable, resilient apps, and then being able to integrate them into uh, the Microsoft product, in many cases, the ecosystem. So for example, how do they integrate with SharePoint? Um, how can you test them with Visual Studio? Um, and how can we deploy out to a uh, public space? So, possibly through the Azure network. And what's really interesting, there's a big focus at the moment around uh, skill sets with life cycle management. Now, a lot of us may know ALM these days in the open source as DevOps. And this is becoming very, uh, it's a bit of a focus point for a lot of people in the way that we can uh, deliver, be really responsive in what they call the value flow. So when a customer wants a particular solution, how quickly can you push that solution out? Maybe not in the 100% fully finished format, but maybe in increments, which is, again, part of the agile delivery model. And of course, you've got tools around these to support us through those, so your capabilities should be around those. We just talked about the cloud platform and the data center, very much so. Cisco is right up there in the data center and delivering those. I suppose the what they're really looking for here is having the right solution for the right application. So in many cases, we've got our internal data center. You might be uh, you know, responsible for internal data center, looking at uh, Hyper-V or looking at VMware, so on and so forth. Um, but on the same sense, it's how do you actually consume those uh, virtual resources? And Basically, that's where our cloud platform comes into it. Our cloud being something, whether it's platform as a service, um, software as a service, infrastructure as a service. And in this case, with Microsoft, there's a big focus on the Microsoft Azure. So another capability required there. Then we go into data management and analytics. This is another capability that Microsoft's really, really excited about, energized about. They've uh, recently done a requirement for a new company Oh, when I say they had an acquisition of Revolution Analytics. And basically, through all these platforms, they enable your business to make better and smarter decisions, you know, through business intelligence, um, whether it's being able to have combining relational, non relational uh, data sources, and being able to then have outputs and presentation layers, whether reports or. Uh, dashboards, whatever it might be, so that the business can learn and respond very quickly in today's dynamic environments. So the big data, the Internet of Things, again, Microsoft, uh, uh, Michael spoke of that earlier, are becoming real focus points for people's capabilities and skill sets. And again, part of what you do as a professional is see how can I provide these opportunities back to the business. So moving through these. Don't worry, we've gone through most of them. Uh, we've got the business applications. Uh, this is typical dynamics um, field of play. They are going into more of a cloud emphasis with both of these to make it easier and scalable and um, accessible from anywhere. But basically, you know, cloud, um, cloud customer relations or CRM basically just looks at, say, you know, how do you manage track your 
customer relations, and then obviously then how do you create uh, your manage your supply chains, financial, and other business units with the ERP. As I said, just tracking through these fairly quickly. Um, mobility, as Michael, as I said, keep reiterating Michael, because there's a lot of synergy between obviously the disciplines. And this is one that I really found came into play last year when I was at last year's uh, World Partner Conference. And it, it goes all, again towards uh, where we're going with cloud and ease of access. So there was a strong focus on the subscription-based consumption model of IT. So in a nutshell, it's how is IT making it easy for people to interact with IT, to consume those IT services. And again, if you have a website, but it's unable to, it doesn't format well on a, uh, on a smartphone or on a particular version of a tablet, you'll find that you'll start to lose uh, the competitive advantage in your market, and part of that, your market share and your competitive advantage. So a lot of the focus is about not only do we have powerful, secure mobility management systems across uh, internal and external networks, on across different types of uh, bring your own device platforms, I suppose it's all then about how we deliver the applications and the security on top of those. An interesting point there is Microsoft plans are getting Windows 10 and 1 billion devices. I've just recently written a blog on you know, the uptake of Windows 10 uh, versus Windows 7. They're now, within the next month or so, we expect to see more Windows 10 devices accessing certain uh, web applications, which shows that there is you know, a steady but strong traction coming in with the deployment. So from a discipline and from a capability, what does your organization have and what can you bring to the table? So moving on to productivity, 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 productivity. It is almost a chant around the, the traps at the moment because uh, at the end of the day, what is the use of IT if it doesn't make us more effective, more productive, uh, make our lives easier? So this has obviously a lot of different connotations to it whether it's productivity in our workflows, uh, looking at, say, the office suite, looking at the cloud solutions, so it's not just the realm of your you know, native applications or your internal exchange, but rather from you know, a exchange everywhere environment. Allowing us as organizations to collaborate more effectively and to share content in such a way that you know, we can both access it when we need it, but also be able to utilize it in, in terms of you know, sharing amongst within teams. And again, it comes down to communications and messaging. A lot of this is then reflected in project and portfolio management. So very aware of my time here, I'm going to keep chugging along. So as we were just talking through those last five or six slides, though the high level competencies, again, we talk about the app dev and ISV. And so the technologies that are, are tested on for you to relate towards the app dev and you know, independent software vendor type capabilities uh, is obviously around is your platform. Knowing how to create the DevOps tool of Visual Studio, not even just writing the code, but also taking it through the test scenarios as well. Utilizing the Windows Server platform, whether it happens to be the new uh, containers, which is the next step in virtualization and what they call micro applications. And of course, then looking at the platform through Windows 10, albeit through the phone, tablet, or on a PC. Cloud infrastructure shares those as your requirements, but also introduces System Center. So if you think of System Center as a suite of products that allows us to manage, deploy, test, monitor our environment. Uh, again, one of my specialities happens to be Operations Manager and Configuration Manager. Uh, also looking at Orchestrator, which I think is an absolute amazing uh, step forward as far as looking at workflows between different systems, uh, looking at automation processes. So if you have your licenses around System Center, I really, really recommend that you take a look at that. There's no surprise when it comes to data analysis. Uh, it's all around SQL Server there. Um, and then obviously punching them up or presenting them and collaborating through SharePoint and obviously then consuming through Office as well. Business applications we talked earlier uh, around the dynamic suite, 
and then mobility, uh, where we start to extend outside our internal environments, there's a big focus on single sign-on. How do we go about managing the federation? Well, that would be through the Azure Active Directory capabilities. You've also got to the left there, which you can't quite see, but it's also rights management. So how do we control our content as it goes out to the public space? Again, our configuration manager and our cloud-based management system, which is the Microsoft Intune, allows us to get us remote uh, management of clients. And of course, we've already talked about productivity with Exchange, Skype for Business, and SharePoint. So I suppose when we look at this roundup, where do you see yourself? Which one of those capabilities would you say, this is where I'm responsible for bringing back to the business? And I suppose once you, you might be one, you might be two, you could be all of them. And I suppose once we understand that, we can then look backwards and say, okay, what are the technologies that I can leverage most in order to be able to be successful with those? And then, of course, what are the certifications that support me in validating that I do have these skill sets? So this is the certification roadmap as we see it now. And look, I don't expect anybody to better see this. And if anybody's interested, it will be posted on our website and it's easily available on the uh, Microsoft sites. But in the end, it does show that a lot of the pathways do marry up to the competencies. We've got our Windows, which really focuses on the device and mobility. We've got Windows Server looking at the platform. We've got Office 365 around productivity. SQL Server when it comes to data analysis and warehousing. You've got the Azure platform allowing us to integrate with the public cloud environment. And of course, then we talk about the ISV skill set, looking at the dev path all the way through web application SharePoint, and the list goes on. Now this certification was created and shared out to me just a few days ago. Um, and unfortunately, there are a few inconsistencies in there, so keep your eyes open and we'll share the latest one very soon. I'll be talking about some updates specifically around uh, what's going with SQL and also server. They haven't reflected it in these yet because they are straight off the bat from Microsoft, and so we can expect a later version to come out very, very soon. So moving right on to what those changes look like, uh, the first ones we definitely know about is the SQL MCSA. It's only just been announced and I'm going to talk, have a slide dedicated to that in just a second, as we do with the server 2016. Now, MCSA, SQL, well, that's out live now, whereas the server, that's yet to come in the very, very short future. There have been some tweaks to the Office 365 MCSA, um, specifically on the focus of the exam and the courses behind those to support those changes and things like Skype for Business over links so on and so forth. What we haven't seen as yet fully uh, mapped out, but uh, again, uh, I can expect them in, in the near future, is those certifications focused on Skype for Business around Exchange 2016, uh, SharePoint 2016, and some updates to the Winten MCSA, where they talk about the platform moving across to uh, the MCSE. So just looking at where we are right now and where we're going to be, or where we are for SQL, uh, you can see in FY16 we had just the one MCSA around SQL Server, and it was just that, SQL Server 2012-2014. You can see down the bottom with, uh, in the financial year 17, the MCSA, we've actually got three MCSA pathways now. So again, it comes down to that you know, database and looking at the data platform you know, services, You've also got the administration and a, strong fo a stronger focus on the business intelligence. They can break out into some specialist certifications down the track. You can see those here with the 473 and 475s. Uh, we do have more mock titles coming up all the time. Just this month, there was a big, strong release of probably about seven new mock titles around uh, SQL. And we're expecting to see the MTSE equivalents released very shortly. But Microsoft has um, shared with us at this point in time the MCSA models. Going on to the server, it's a little bit more straightforward with the server. Um, effectively, you're going to have the current 2012 courses replaced by 
the uh, 740s, 741, 742 exams. Uh, and of course, with those exams, we're expecting in September for the mock, mocks of official courseware to be released to support those. Uh, and again, it'll be around the installation storage and compute, which is very cloud initiated networking. And then we're looking at identity, which we mentioned before is a very important today's security environment. For those of you that are already 2008 or 2012 MCSAs, uh, you can get a shortcut <laughs> to your new MCSA by doing the upgrade to your skills. Uh, that's ex I mean, it's expected that should be uh, due for release later this month, but again, as soon as we have confirmation, we'll share that out via our ULEARN. Um, so that's our internal newsletter. Well, when I say internal, that's a DNS newsletter that goes out to you guys. So if you're not subscribed to that, please do. And um, as I said down there with the mock courses, uh, the 2016 schedule for those later in the year. So just finishing up, uh, I think that's pretty much all I had to say. Um, so hopefully uh, so it was a slightly different spin than probably what we were, I'm hoping to do around looking at the dedicated mapping for Microsoft coming into the financial year. Uh, but as I said, unfortunately getting those roadmaps out, it, it, it's a work in progress. But at least knowing where the competencies lie, we can also know where to focus on and preemptive striking them down the track. So um, thank you for listening and I'll head back to Beck. Well, thank you so much for that, Matt. That was such an informative session that you produced. I think what we might do is actually go out to the questions that the um, audience actually have. Um, and I think we might start with you, Michael. Is that okay? Michael, you're there. Okay, we might give Michael a few minutes. Um, Matt, there's a few questions for you that we actually have from our audience today. And uh, the first question is, uh, what is the best way to maximise the chances of passing an exam? Sorry, what's that? So what is the best way um, to maximise the chances of passing an exam? <laughs> Oh, that is such a fantastic question. Um, it is, isn't it? Can I have another hour? <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Um, so who was that question from? That was from Joseph. Yeah, Joseph, uh, look, uh, before I was in my current role in, say, management, the partner manager, my role was actually a technical trainer for the cloud space, and I've been doing that for over seven years. And it's the one question I always took all my students through was, how are we going to get you through this exam? Uh, look, this, it's not an easy question to answer, and I would love to better take it offline if you're interested in having a phone call. But um, basically, it's a three-pronged attack. One, um, do obviously the Microsoft official learning, you know, through a you know, reputable, uh, global award-winning company like DDoS, and having <laughs> trained professionals like myself guiding through that process. But there's also other elements to it where even in the background, uh, they say that the courseware presumes you have real life experiences. So from that perspective, I say to a lot of my students, don't rush into it. Make sure you've got the experience behind you and really through the syllabi. But again, I go on, I go on, so I've got to keep this short. So if you want to take this off, I can uh, feel free to do so. <laughs> Thanks for that, Matt. Um, we actually have a few more questions um, coming through for you. Um, so the next question does come from uh, Adam. Um, so he asks, us, do we still provide exam vouchers? We do, we do. So uh, as far as, well, for now we do. Okay, and as part of an ongoing promotion that we've been working on, if you do a course with uh, DLS for whatever associate exam there is, we'll provide you with an exam voucher. Now what we expect to uh, release later in the year is the certifications uh, become a bit more uh, rounded out that we'll put towards other bundles like we saw with Michael which includes practice questions and so on and so forth as well. So look out for those. Great, thank you for that Matt. Yes. And Here one come. last question. Hi Michael, yes we can hear you. Ah, uh, you've unmuted me. Fantastic. I'm, I feel like I'm talking to the wall. So, what was your uh, what was your question, Beck? 
So what we might do is we've got one more question for Matt and then we'll come back to your questions. Um, fantastic. If that's okay, Michael. Okay, no fantastic. Problem. So last question, Matt. Um, what does the future look like for MCSEs? Oh, I wish I could tell you. Um, <laughs> no, honestly, this is, it's been actually a, a, a point of frustration for me because, you know, trying to guide people through the learning paths means I've got to know exactly what's out there. Uh, what we do know um, at the moment is what we see with the MCSA. Now, there will be some tweaking to the MCSE as is. Um, I can, for example, uh, Gary Duffield mentioned the devices later on. At the moment, the MCSE, uh, for the devices, uh, focus around uh, Windows 8, for example, is that for, so, which that doesn't make sense with the Windows 10. But when we talk about MCCs, obviously there's a lot of different types of MCCs. Which ones are they going to introduce? Um, I really can't say right now, but I'm very excited to hear about it coming up. We do have WPC, World Partner Conference, happening next week, so we hope to get some more information then. And uh, hopefully we'll have some more information for you then, so sorry, I can't be more. That's all right, Matt. Thank you so much for that. Um, Michael, I think it's over to you now. <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> so what was the question, Beck? All right. So the question <laughs> is, um, how long is my certification valid for? Uh, okay, so your certification is valid for three years from the point at which you completed your last exam. So okay. if for argument's sake you um, you were doing your CCNA and then you did your ICND2 on um, a certain date, then your certification is valid from that point um, for three years. Now, how you recertify, uh, you don't have to come go and sit your CCNA exam again. You can actually sit another associate or um, or more senior exam, pass that exam within that three year period and then what happens is you get certified in that newer exam or that new certification stream plus your CCNA gets uh, rolled over for another three years. So what Cisco want you to do is to continue um, uh, effectively certifying or, or, or growing your, uh, your education uh, approximately every three years. Great, thank you for that. Um, another question is coming through for you. Uh, which wireless course do most students go for? Uh, look, generally we feel that um, most students tend to go for the, um, the, the CCNA version, which is the Y Fund course. And generally what we find is that, because um, that sort of gives you a nice exposure to uh, a number of the Cisco technologies that you'll be probably be deploying. Uh, and generally that would be the, what we would call the, um, the entry course that we would recommend to most of our students. Okay, so that's it guys, that's the wi fund course for your wireless courses. And one last question for you, Michael. Um, do I need to reset my CCNA exam to recertify? No, no, look, um, yeah, look, as, as I mentioned, we, we don't actually have, need to come back and sit your same exam again. All you need to do is, um, I mean, you can if you want to, if you like taking exams and you just want to recertify, but um, generally you, what we suggest is you uh, advance your learning and education journey come and sit a uh, perhaps maybe a, a complimentary course which is maybe in one of the other stacks or um, maybe one of the routes which or T-sheet exams which is the next step from your CCNA routing and switching certification. Fantastic. Well thank you so much for that Michael. We've got one more question for Matt actually that just came through from Steve. Um, so is there any upgrade path to uh, for MCSEs server instruct Infrastructure 2012 to 2016? Yeah, again, an excellent question. Uh, look, we've seen that there is an upgrade path for the MCSA. I would expect, as I said, as the MCSA becomes more mature, we'll see those updates to the MCSA and there should be an upgrade pathway that way as well. But um, we'll have to see that.